Good morning everyone. Today we'll be studying a new subject known as data structures. We begin with the first unit of data structures which is just an introduction to data structures. This subject is introduced in the second year of diploma, second year of BSc IT or BSc Computer Science as well as second year of engineering. This forms to be the very crux of uh, any computer science subject which we go for. And to be precise enough, students usually feel that this subject is the toughest subject of their curriculum. But mind well, going through the videos, this subject will become a fun for you and you will be able to understand each and every concept very clearly under this one. The topics which we are going to cover up in the due course are what is the introduction to data structures, the concept of ADT or an abstract data type, types of data structures, there are basically two types, linear and non-linear, and the operations of various operations on data structures. To begin with, how can we call a program is efficient? Now, all of you have come from either your 10th standard or 12th standard where somewhere you have learned programming. Now, whenever you write a program, you have always been asked to write down an efficient program or an optimal program. How do you call a program is going to be efficient? If it runs correctly, that means it gives you the output as per your uh, requirements. It's very easy to read and understand. Okay, you have written a program which is very, very difficult for us to understand. So it's really going to be difficult if somebody asks you to debug in that program. So as a result of that, it has to be quite easy to understand. It's easy to modify in case if your teacher tells you that, okay, these are the flaws in the program. You need to modify them. So you should be able to modify them. And it should be also easy to debug. If there is any problem and you're not getting the output correctly, you should be able to find out where are you going wrong. So that is how you have to debug the programs. So, in this subject of data structures, we are going to study a hell lot of data structures which are there with you. They are, let's say, in short, I'll be uh, discussing each of these data structures like stacks. You will be knowing what is a queue. You will be understanding what is a tree, what is a graph, etc. And mind well, students, this is something which you are going to need till the end of your career. If you go for any competitive exams or you go for jobs, for interviews, this subject is always going to help you a lot because the logic which you learn in this subject, you apply it in all the other subjects in your future. To begin with, what is exactly a data structure or what are the types of data structure which we have? It represents the organization of data in the computer memory on which operations like insert, delete, update can be performed. Now, let's say I am asking you to store any data inside the memory. Now, when I'm asking you to store some data into the memory or just take a simple example, if I am telling you to just pick up all the stuff which you take in the morning in the college and dump in your bag. It depends upon how organized you are, the way you arrange your bags. Let's say I'm picking up all my items, my tiffin, my umbrella, my uh, uh, bottles, everything I'm picking up, I'm just throwing it in my bag and I'm leaving for my college. Now the thing is going to be that my bag is going to be quite uh, not in a proper way, right? Uh, you will not have the bag in a balanced way. Like in case if you arrange the things properly, like if I arrange my defense on one side, if I have my bottle on another side, if I have umbrella, if I have my purse properly kept, right? So this is how I'm organizing the data inside my bag. So even if my bag is small, it still appears to be organized for me. But in case if I don't arrange the data properly, it's going to be a mess, right? So it represents the organization of data inside the computer memory on which the operations like insert, delete or update can be performed specifically. Data structure is basically a group of data elements included under one name 
that is students data employees data you must have heard this when you go to your college all the students database is maintained now database is maintained in some format like in colleges we usually maintain it using excel so we have rows and columns pattern so that is the excel pattern which we are maintaining right so that is where students data is maintained now this is how a database is maintained but the database gets maintained with the help of some data structure so if you go and check excel which is in the form of a row and a column this also is a kind of data structure to you the data structure defines a particular way of storing and organizing data so that it can be used efficiently moving ahead why this is important computer programs not just are not just to solve our problem but also it should be efficient so if you are writing a program and okay you are writing in a program which is uh, adding two numbers right it is a program and you are getting the correct answer but it's not efficient you have used hell lot of five to six variables which is not at all needed to you you can do the work using two or max to max three variables only then why to use multiple resources guys this is going to uh, take a lot of memory so let's not use all those things so as a result of that we need to understand how to organize the data properly a programmer having a poor knowledge of data structure does not understand the importance and hence puts any data structure which is easier so you as you have studied c programming in your previous classes c or c++ programming you must have gone through the concepts of arrays you must have gone through the concept of pointers you must have gone through the concept of structures unions etc so you know that what kind of data should be stored using what kind of data type so if i just have roll number of students i can use an integer array but in case if i want to store the roll number the address the name of the student which actually are of different data data types like roll number is of integer then uh, the name will be a string your address will be a string so that time i'm going to use a structure so i need to understand what type of data i'm dealing and what type of structure i'll be needing for storing that analysis of a problem to determine the basic operations that might be supported that is insertion deletion and searching so we should be writing a data structure in such a way that you should be able to insert the data into the data structure efficiently delete something from the data structure also search properly from that data structure quantify the resources constraints for each operation you should be able to understand what are the resources available with you what are the constraints which is put to you for each of the operation let's say i have a resource which is of uh, i i i have space only to store three variables how can i work with only three variables definitely i'm not going to include any fourth variable because i do not have space so if i have a constraint on the number of resources which i need to use right so we need to store the things accordingly select the data structure that meets the best meets the requirements based on all your uh strategies which you are going to apply so for a data structure there are some important terms which you need to know that is first of all a data which you are actually going to store a record which is going to be a collection of data like if i am asking the record of past year students so it's going to be the database of all the students which have cleared the course in the last year so that is a record a file which is going to be a collection of all the records if i ask you to give me a file of the students who have attempted for data structure uh, as a subject so that is going to be a file what are the different types of data structures so data structures basically are divided into two major types that is primitive and non primitive primitive data structures are integer floating point characters and pointers now what are these primitive data types these are the data types which are by default available to you under any programming language i hope you have studied at least c and c++ as one of your programming languages most of you must be going through java in this semester also right so these data types you by default get under uh any programming language like we have integer so integer will require two bytes 
when you are going in C programming language. Floating point will require four bytes when you go for C programming language. So there is a predefined memory which is required for each of these, uh, uh, I mean, uh, data types. So that is what is primitive. Non-primitive are the ones which we create for our use, just say arrays, lists, files, etc. Okay, so arrays is something which you must have gone through where it is a collection of similar kind of data types. So if you have multiple types of data types, we cannot put it under a single head that is an array. We need a structure at that time, right? But in case if you have different types of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, data types available. So uh, sorry, the different uh, many number of the same data type available like roll numbers of students. Uh, names of many students. So we can use a single array to store all these things, right? Then you have a file which I've already discussed and a list is basically divided into two parts that is linear list and non-linear list. That is a stack and a queue are a part of linear list and graph and trees are going to be a part of non-linear list. We are going to explore each and every topic in detail in the upcoming videos. As of now, I'm just giving you a uh, I mean, a crux of what we are exactly going to follow in our subject. In this subject, what all topics we are going to have, I'm just giving you a gist of all that in this introduction video. What are the different applications of data structures? So, the first application of data structure is in building an operating system. You need an efficient operating system for uh, updating the records. So when you are uh, updating the records, when you are building an operating system, you need a data structure, How you, uh, what all you expect from an operating system. You need file management from an operating system. You need memory management from an operating system. You need deadlock prevention from an operating system. You need process management from an operating system, etc. So what all thing, whatever you need, you will definitely need a, a format or a data type under which you are going to store the data. So that is what is an operating system. Next is compiler construction. So whenever you have run any of the programs up to now, you must have seen that whenever you are uh, executing a program, whenever you are uh, like trying to uh, execute the program, you have to first compile the program. So definitely that is handling the syntax issues. Definitely who's doing this? This is done by the compiler, but definitely this compiler is also storing some data with it. And then only it is able to do the further part, right? So that is what is compiler construction. Third is database management systems. So whenever you want to store in the database, okay, whenever you have some data and you want to store in the database, so that is what is a database management system. And the last one is solve the real world problems. So uh, like if I am telling you to uh, find out that what kind of data structure will be required by a bank. Because in bank, what all operations you have, you have withdrawal of the money, you have depositing the money, you have opening an account, you have closing an account, etc. So whenever I'm trying to tell you these, definitely this is related to a database, but you will need some format or some type of data structure under which you're going to implement all these things. So that is how you're solving the real world problems. Then talking about how your programs are going to become more efficient when you are using data structures. It is the programs are written to solve the problems like searching. If I'm telling you to search something from a given uh, database and I'm telling you to search something. So you will need a data structure, sorting the data items in the ascending or the descending order, updating the data. If I'm telling you, okay, today the salary is 20,000. Tomorrow the salary has to be 50,000. So updating of the data. Programs efficiency is based on the execution time and memory space utilization. This is very, very true students because your program will become more efficient when the time required for executing the program is less and the memory required is also less. If you are having a, a, a program which takes approximately 15 minutes to run, right? 15 minutes to execute. Nobody is going to look at that program also. But in case if it takes less time to execute, this is definitely going to be helpful. If the memory space is also less utilized, this is also very uh, useful because uh, in less memory space, if I can work with the program, I can uh, utilize my re remaining memory for some other work. 
Efficiency of the program depends on the data structure used to represent the data on which operations like search, sort, insert, etc. are performed. So, how you are going to represent the data is the crux of uh, studying this entire subject. So, the types of data structures and the operations which we are going to study in this subject is uh, basic linear data structures because the primitive data structures you have already covered up in the uh, previous semesters also and definitely you will be having some uh, upcoming videos which are going to give you an idea of all those uh, primitive data types also. This subject data structures is completely related to the higher end data structures like the linear data structures, non-linear data structures and the operations which we are going to perform. On the linear data structures, we have the arrays, we have the linked list, we have the stacks, we have the queues. Non-linear data structures, we have the graphs, we have the trees. The operations which we perform on each of these data structures are going to be the insert, delete, traverse, search and sort operations. So, the linear data structure, an array. So, if you check... An array is a collection of data elements of the same data type. Now, if you have different items of different data types, you are not able to put it under a single array. As I told you, you are going to put it under, let's say, a um, structure. But if you have a data of the similar type, we try to put it under a single head that is an array. The data elements are stored in the consecutive memory locations that is one after the another. The elements can be accessed by an index. That is what we use the A, A of I, right? So we use an index variable and using that index variable, we go and we uh, try and fetch the values. Now, if we check here, so if this is an array, so this is our first element. So we begin with index 0, 1, 2, 3. These are the elements which we have like A, B, C, D, etc. And the array length is 4 because it's 0, 1, 2, 3. So length is 4. First index is going to be 0. So the last index is going to be 3. So if you check this example, so if we are taking this 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, some kind of marks over here. So if we are referring with the index values, so marks of 0 is going to be 10, marks of 1 is going to be 20 accordingly. So this is how we are visualizing the array, how we are going to store it inside a data structure array. Moving ahead with what is a linked list. So if we check a linked list, linked list is something where you do not have to, I mean, uh, basically the difference between an array and a linked list is in an array, you uh, cannot, I mean, uh, traverse, right? You have to always traverse in a linear sequence. Like I uh, have to go from index number one to index number n. That is how I need to traverse, right? But in a linked list, it's not that you have to always traverse in a linear fashion. You can start from the between also. So that is what is the basic difference between array and linked list. Further differences we'll be seeing when we go for uh, studying the videos or studying the specific videos of linked list uh, later on in our separate units. Linked list is a kind of dynamic data structure which you can uh, build during runtime. See, mind well, array for an array, you have to always specify the size of the array at the beginning. But when you are going for a dynamic data structure, at runtime, you can specify what is going to be the size of the linked list. And elements can be inserted and deleted anywhere without any shifting. Let's say in an array, if I tell you to delete any element from here, let's say if I'm telling you to delete this element from here. So once you delete this element, you have to shift the C and D. This may not be the case when you are going for a linked list. In contrast to fixed size in arrays, linked list can allocate memory to data elements during runtime also. So this is what is dynamic memory allocation. A linked list consists of nodes that are dynamically created by allotting memory during runtime. The node basically has two parts. It has, if you check, this is the first part which is called as the data and this is the next part which is called as a pointer. So this pointer is pointing to the next linked list. Anyways, details of this we are going to cover up in the future classes. So let's say this is the first record 12. It is internally linked to the next record 56. This is internally linked to the third record 89, 29 and so on.